everybody, Konanja here, back in Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. Continuing on through our scenarios, we got uh, just two to go here in the cars. Gentleman's Disagreement and iCar. Today we're doing Gentleman's Disagreement, which, uh, judging by the text here, kind of has us going up against the late 90s Japanese manufacturers building a sport coupe. If that doesn't sound like a challenge targeted at me, I don't know what is. So I'm really putting emphasis on doing well in this one, and hopefully uh, won't take very long. Our limitations are that we have to use premium unleaded fuel. We have to have 275 horsepower maximum. That was the gentleman's agreement. You could not create a car that made more than 275, 276 horsepower. Um, acceleration, 0 to 60 in 5.5 and seconds, and reliability higher than 60. Our specifications, the points payers are tameness, more than 60, sportiness, more than 39, economy, more than 31.4 miles per gallon, and $8,500 in maximum total costs. So, that is a rather difficult challenge, but um, I think I've pretty much got it in my head what we need to do. And it's going to be uh, probably not probably not what you might think I would go for in a lot of these. Uh, but some of these are pretty obvious. Like, we're going to go with the longitudinal setup. I'm going to have mixed mix and strut. Uh, I'm going to go for double wishbone in the rear. Because I would like to have that tameness. And I'm going to stick with rear-wheel drive. And corrosive resistant steel is probably going to be the one I go with. I may change this in the future. We'll see. We get three quality off of that. I have two different bodies to choose from. We can go for the large one, we can go for the small one. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, by the way, the year is 1991, so yes, I will be building pretty much the exact car I've built many times because I've done a lot of these early 90s sports cars. Uh, but with that 275 horsepower total, it's a little bit different. Uh, definitely some... some uh, some different numbers than I've been working with. I'm going to go for the small body because I don't really see any advantages to the large one. Comfort's not an issue, uh, and really that's all there is to it. There's no utility. So yeah, we'll go for the small body, and uh, I will do this thing up in my early 90s best. Okay, so here we have it. It is slightly more mid-90s than it is early 90s. However, uh, the early 90s were kind of headed in this direction. Uh, it was an interesting time for car design. You really kind of just got out of the how intricate can we make this design and futuristic in the 80s to the early 90s were a time where how sleek, aerodynamic, and kind of sexy looking could we make a car. It was a very different uh, automotive design feel. A lot of people didn't necessarily agree. I think I like them better straight. With this style of car design in the early 90s. But as time has gone on, uh, they've kind of learned to kind of idolize these cars. And I've noticed a lot of people kind of coming around to them as of late, uh, which is nice to see. Alrighty, for an engine. Uh, I think the two choices here would be, well, three choices really. Uh, we don't have one and two, Trump. An inline four turbo, an inline six NA, uh, possibly an inline six turbo, but I think that might be a little bit of overkill, and our turbo tech isn't quite there yet, so I don't know about using a turbo for this. Uh, or a V6. 
We don't have a V6 to use, so I'm probably going to go for the MA inline 6, which should be fairly reliable to get 200 and, you know, 275 horsepower out of. It's going to be a little bit of a stretch. The, the regular NA V6s, or NA V6 or inline 6 in the era, was good for about 220 horsepower. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of displacement to try and accomplish that with an NA setup. I would like it to be fairly high revving because I need to use its peak power. Uh, so I'm going to use some things here like forged uh, beams which will give us a max RPM on average. So it doesn't really help. Uh, I need to torque more than anything. It would be I-beam steel to get that. I have 5 tech to use on the bottom end. That is very helpful. There's high and high. So those are the two good pairings. I'll go ahead and use that quality. Go for dual over the cam, four valves per cylinder, pretty much the common setup of this era. Uh, aluminum aluminum is a little actually kind of ahead of the curve. Most engines of the early 90s like this were using iron box aluminum heads. I don't want to take the penalty in reliability, so I'm going to stick with aluminum aluminum. Go with fairly high compression. Might even probably go higher than that in the end. Uh, and for the cam profile, I'm going to go with a 55, and I'm going to spend a large chunk of my money on the engine, because if you look here, the uh, the 0 to 60 has to be 5.5, that's that's not slow, so we need, we need to have that power. So I'm going to not do VVT, but I'm going to do VVL, uh, to pull required 1, penalized quality, negative 1. So it might be a little too early to do a net VVL. Uh, same for VBT though. Let me hold off on those and I'll come back to them if needed. I definitely want that one and I definitely want it to be white. So I'm going to use all seven of my quality here. And A for now, another thing I may come back to, I don't know just yet. We got multi point EFI to choose from, which is awesome. That was a problem earlier that we couldn't get. Uh, multi-point EFI soon enough. Seems like maybe that was adjusted, or maybe I'm just not remembering it right. That's a possibility too. Uh, we're gonna do performance intake. We're using premium. We're gonna go fairly rich. 13.3 sounds. Eh, 13.2. Because I would really like this thing to be uh, pretty, pretty much on the razor edge. Like you know, just as much power as we can safely get out of it. Say it's a fairly big engine, so 7600 sounds acceptable. We'll do tubular headers and tune three quarters should be plenty. Emissions, we don't need to worry about it. Comfort, we don't need to worry about it. So we can kind of cheat and <laughs> open up this stuff. Uh, that is something I would like to see kind of change in these scenarios in the future is maybe add in a loudness and emissions requirement, but make them very low. Make them very, like, easy to get, but not to the point where you can just run this thing with no cans and no mufflers uh, and, and try and sell it. I think that would be a little bit more realistic. Okay, well, for our first test, we'll show that I think I may be running into some knock issues, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's gonna make 230 horsepower. One horsepower off. You can't fault me for that. Uh, 229 and 212 of pounds. I actually had tons of octane left, uh, so I can uh, I can go a little bit more crazy with this. And the cost is really low, so I'm gonna go back to the top end. I'm gonna go for the VVL, which means I'm gonna drop one quality so that we don't go uh, too far. And yes, that should be right. I won't take any quality penalty for that. I'm gonna go with a. 75 on the secondary cam because I think that's where this engine was kind of being held back uh, which means we can go with more compression and more timing Look at 
the improvement in the top end there, just by giving it that uh, variable out timing. Huge improvement. Uh, that was the main thing I changed there, and you can see before it was just like this, and now it just kept right on going nice and smooth. Very happy with that. What's reliability sitting at? 66.3. That's acceptable. Um, still got Octane left, so I can throw some more compression at this thing. Let's try 10 and a half. Uh, we'll click test here. Uh, click test, I say. 90.1. We have 90.3 to choose or to use, so that's acceptable for now. Let me check everything else. 88 horsepower. Reliability is at 66.3. We're going a little past peak horsepower, but that's good. You want a little bit past, you know, its peak number, so you can use that power. Otherwise, it's going to be right at the red line, and you're not going to be able to use it. Um, hmm. I think I'm actually kind of happy with it for now. These are all things we can come back to and adjust. We're still pretty cheap. I think going non-turbo is going to help in the power department. Or sorry, in the in the cost department, but I've actually got to lose some horsepower. Our 275 cap means that uh, 288 isn't going to fly. I do that by destroking it. Alrighty, there we have it, 275 horsepower, we ended up at uh, 2.8 liters-ish, and uh, I want to hit that 275 dead on because I will not be caught with my pants down with not as much power as we could possibly make, because if there's anything I know about the gentleman's agreement, it's that they lied. They lie a lot, so uh, if we make anything less than 275, we're not going to be able to keep up. Alrighty, now for building the actual car, it looks like uh, we got... You know, a very nice power curve, so I think we could probably get away with a 5-speed. Uh, we may go for 6, though, to try and get that sportiness up, because then, let's see, here's our 60 mile per hour mark. Uh, we gotta, obviously, increase top speed quite a bit. Uh, we'll go above it to get our miles per gallon. And let's see, be it roughly here, so let me space it out just a bit. And that would give us a really good 0 to 60 time, which is very important. That's actually a little much. That should be 60. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to check on that. All right, got it for sports compound or medium compound. Uh, tameness is a factor. Tameness of 60 is actually pretty high. Sportiness of 39 is not terribly high. So let's start with medium. I did not make the fender wells larger on this car, but I don't think I need them. 225 should be uh, more than enough. Uh, 205s is probably very comfortable. So I'm going to go for 16s, I think. A yeah, 16 seems okay. Uh, comfort's not an issue, though, so... Hmm. Tameness is. This is another one I'll, I'll kind of keep an eye on. And two quality belt there. I may go even higher there if needed. One Pistons is a very light car. Not gonna go too crazy on the pads because of comfort issues, or sorry, tameness issues. But we want big brakes. So 37. I'm a little worried about oversteer, so I'm actually gonna put a little bit less brake in the back. 10 sounds good. And let's go for fully clad. Try and get that. Um, Try and get that miles per gallon. I'm not going to put any downforce on it, but it's nice to have the option. We give it more cooling than it needs. Quite a bit more. Try and get reliability, because reliability has to be 60. Uh, we can back that off if needed, because once we hit 60, that's good. You know, I don't have to put any more reliability in it. I don't get any more points that way. We'll do four seats. Um, actually, I don't necessarily need four seats, so let's go for two. And, hmm, see this kind of stuff is confusing, I think, let's see, let's look at the weight, 106.3, it's the same weight, but I'm sure it has a higher, a higher comfort, but we don't need comfort, so it's not, let's actually go for basic for now, 
and no insulation, basically. I don't think we even need that. That just doesn't seem like it's going to help us at all. No entertainment, power steering, ABS, yeah, let's do that. And safety is not an issue either. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I wish these were at least somewhat in part of this so that uh, I couldn't get away with putting, you know, no airbags and no seatbelts in the car. Uh, that's basically what I feel like I'm doing now. So continuing on, I'm going to go for a sport suspension to start with. Most likely going to have to adjust it. So let's look at our base score. How do we start? Uh, 275. I've actually got to go... This is one thing that's always kind of bugged me with this game, is that uh, the number, like 275 horsepower maximum. You would think that would mean you could run 275. No. No, that means you can run up to 275. So you can run 274. That's okay. I'll back off on that. 062, less than 55. We didn't hit that. Tameness at 49.1 and sportiness 36.6. So we're pretty close on those. I can I can deal with that. But let's look at let's go to the test track. Where's our 0 to 60? 5.6. What do we need? What did we need? 5.5. So let's go back to the gearing. Uh, does it need to be spaced out less? Is that what it needs? Let's try that. It may not have grip. That may be what's holding back that uh, 060. We'll see. It does not seem to have improved. Yeah, that did not affect it. So let's go ahead and put wider tires in the back. 225s. Let's start it. Uh, I'd like to see my points, please. Yes, that did it. That did it. Let's look. Test track 5.5. Perfect. Like it. Let's look at the R rate. Very tame. It's uh, it's definitely that that tire change. I think probably put a lot of understeer in it. So that's good. That's good. Let me drop a little bit of displacement. Whoa, that was way more than I wanted. I uh, was at 2.8. Let's go to 2.75. Ah, uh, that's actually more than I needed. Okie dokie, there is 274 horsepower. So now if we test her... Ah, uh, we have a score, but it's not going to be good enough yet because we've got to get the tameness and sportiness up. Those are two things that kind of don't necessarily like to play well together. To get a car to be more sporty, sometimes you also need to make it less tame. Uh, not necessarily, though. So one thing I can do is probably drop off on the pad type a little, but maybe give it bigger brakes. So about 27. 25. Uh, let's see what that does. Okay, that did very little to the tameness. And it did hurt our sportiness, so I'd rather have the more aggressive pads. Okay, so one thing I said I wanted to try was the sports compound tires, which can hurt tameness, but in this case I think it may help. So let's see. All right, 54 and 35. And now we are at 54 and 38. So we're getting very close to sportiness. We're still a little bit off on the old tameness thing. There's something interesting. Under the sport setup, I've actually got higher spring rates in the back. It doesn't seem like it would be good for this car. Uh, it's got pretty good nose weight to it. So let's actually look at the detail stats. Um, where was that under? Where was that? Was it under overview? It's under here somewhere. Test track, maybe? Yes. Yes, it is a 53.46. So we definitely want more front springs than rear. So I'm going to flip flop these 32 and 24. And I'm going to do the same for. I'm going to give it just a little bit more stiffness in the front. I'm going to go for a 2000 and a 1600 on these guys, too. So this is probably going to help our tameness. It may kill our sportiness. Okay, yes. Uh, tameness up to 55.4, not a huge increase, and it did indeed kind of ruin our sportiness. Interesting. 
Alrighty, so I want to at least solve one of these. Um, how about let's try and get the sportiness up. Uh, sportiness would giving it more downforce kind of help, or any downforce really. Let's see. I'm just going to go up to like 10, just to kind of test it. Let's see what that did. Uh, oh, that helped. Uh, well, it had virtually no effect on either. All it did was hurt some other stuff. Maybe that wasn't big enough of a change. Let's go up to like... 30? Let's see what that does. Okay, okay. Very, very minor improvement in sportiness and tameness. Uh, it is hurting miles per gallon, but we got a lot of that to, to use. Let's actually... I wanted to try the tires. Uh, lower profile, maybe? Or maybe let's go up to 17, which would be a little weird for 1991, but I think it's worth trying. Let's see... Uh, oh, it looks like... Yes. Yes, okay, we've made some headway. Uh, we have sportiness. Now I just gotta try and get the tameness there. That should be easier. Should be easier. Maybe through suspension? Maybe a little less rear bar? Try and get this thing to push a little bit harder. Uh, that helps tameness and... Okay. So that helped tameness, sure, but it killed sportiness. Hmm. This is a tough one. So here's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, it's 1991, but I've got to use everything the game has at my disposal. You know, it's a scenario, it's not real life. So <laughs> I feel a little guilty about this, but I want to try. Uh, it has the option to give me traction control and electronic stability, and I need tameness without killing sportiness. To me, adding traction control is going to kill sportiness, but to the average consumer, It'll probably make it more tame and the same amount of sport. So let's see. At the price of 90 bucks and five production units, I've got the money to do it. Let's see. Aha! Okay, so we did not get tameness. I kind of expected to jump across that. But we are very close. 59.4. Okay, I'm gonna. I have some money, so I'm gonna give it more quality in the tires, more quality in the brakes. That's where I think it kind of matters, and there is bronze. But we've got a long way to go to get silver. Uh, and the cost is a pretty big factor, so I don't want to do anything that's going to cost a whole lot of money without a whole lot of uh, sporting and stack, because that's the other big points there. So something to consider is maybe a lighter body. Uh, we got chassis type of steel, but how about... Let's see, production unit's very high, everything else very low on the plastic, and it is uh, lower weight. It just has a little bit more tooling cost and material cost. Let's see what it does. So we're sitting at, what, 72.03? 72.45. Oh, interesting, did that actually add weight? Did it really? Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Let's look. Test track, no, detail stats, weight, curb weight. No, that is under test track, right? Silly cone, it's right here. I actually dropped 400 pounds, and now the thing won't hook up, I bet. I bet you that's the problem. Um, so, what if we... We can't really go much wider in the back. How am I gonna get, I guess, more money on the tires? <laughs> okay, still bronze, but we've picked up a lot of points, so that was a good thing. Uh, 1104. Yes, we are probably pretty good on the 0 to 60 now. 55. Five. That's all we need. But what could we do? Let us look back here. Back here. Thank you. 60 reliability. How much do we have? We have overall reliability 76. I've got way more than necessary. I could make it cheaper then. Uh, yeah. How could we do that? Uh, we could drop our arrow, which would help our miles per gallon. Let's do that. Let's see what that has uh, an effect on. Did not gain us anything. Huh. I thought, oh, point, point 0.1 miles per gallon apparently was not enough. Um, what else would help that? Um, reliability. Total cost, I guess, would affect that. So let's go to the engine. 
and I know I put some expensive stuff in the bottom end that I'm a little worried about reducing. Uh, that's average and average. Let's test it, make sure it does not blow up. Oh yeah, it's not going to work that way. Not going to work that way at all. Let's go back to that and that, but lower the quality. Okay, so now we're still safe. Uh, top end, see when I reduce the quality on this, I'm going to lose power. Indeed, yes, so that's not worth it. Not worth it. But let's see what that, uh, well, that was only seven bucks, never mind. What about tuning the arrow? Like, if we go 65 front, will that make it more sporty and tame? It does, but in very small amounts. Uh, gained us, what, four points? Lost us a little bit of miles per gallon, but we can drop the rear to make up for that. So we'll do something like that. Uh, well, then I lost my points altogether, so that doesn't help. So... Back to the drawing board. Alrighty, so as I kind of expected, this one has taken a lot of kind of fiddling around and adjusting the little things. I kind of narrowed it down to I think I need to go with a more aggressive suspension. I can see already I've, I've started down that track, but I think I'm closing in on it, so this may be the one that does it. Going with even stiffer sp front springs, and I'm gonna go with a ridiculous amount of camera in the front just to see what that does. Should give us the sportiness, which is the biggest points pair. Let us see. Silver! Hey, with some points to spare. 1123. Yeah, they gave us six more points in the sportiness category. All done. So that is the gentleman's disagreement scenario complete with silver. All eight of these are now complete with silver. The only one left is the iCar. And after that, we will continue on probably in the Vector Automotive Challenge. So I'll be going back to some more. Uh, Kind of, I don't know how to describe it, maybe, I guess fantasy is the way to describe it. Uh, my own kind of made up scenarios. Uh, so look forward to that in the future, I know some people have been waiting for that. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.